Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and this is the unboxing and a quick hands-on review of the Moto G22. So here's the box. In India, this phone is available only in one variant. It's priced at 11,000 rupees and comes with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage. As part of the launch offer, you can actually get this phone even at 10,000 rupees directly on Flipkart between 13th and 14th April. It's available in three colors, Cosmic Black, Iceberg Blue and Mint Green. We have the Cosmic Black color with us right now. Now the main highlights for this phone would be its pure stock Android experience with three years of assured security updates. Besides that, it also got pretty good cameras for both the front and rear cameras, decent performance, and actually a punch hole design display with 90 hertz screen refresh rate. And that too friends, just for a starting price of 11,000 rupees. So the specs definitely look impressive. Now let's have a quick unboxing. So once again, here's the box. It's got a pretty similar design to other Motorola phones as well. With the M logo, it just says Moto G22. On the back side, we have a preview of the phone. It says 50 megapixel quad camera and the color combinations, 90Hz max vision, sleek and stylish design. Now let's unbox it. First, there's the phone with the case on. Next, there's documentation, a SIM card ejector tool, followed by a 20W turbo charger and finally, a USB Type-C charging cable. Now let me just put everything aside and coming back to the phone, let me just remove these stickers. Now this is how the phone looks on the back and this is how the phone looks on the front. Now let's have a physical overview. On the back, this phone actually has a 2.5D curved fiberglass with an anti-fingerprint coating so it won't attract too much smudges. Underneath that, it has a pretty cool pattern. Well, it doesn't look too flashy but it does have a pretty cool style to it. At the top, we got the camera module with a pretty new design. Following that is the Moto logo and the Motorola branding. On the front, we got a pretty huge display with a punch hole design with pretty sleek borders all around. As for the chin, it's kinda big but considering the price, it's definitely pretty good. Above the display, we got the earpiece and some sensors. Now for the sides, on the right side, we got the power and volume buttons. Power button also acts like a fingerprint scanner. All the buttons are sufficiently elevated and they also have a nice tactile feel to them. At the top, we just got the audio jack. On the left side, we got the SIM card tray housing two nano SIM slots along with a dedicated SD card slot. Finally, at the bottom, we got the primary microphone followed by the USB Type-C charging port and the speaker grill. This phone has a thickness of 8.49 mm and weighs 185 grams. In hand, it fits pretty comfortably, it doesn't feel too heavy and the phone does feel pretty sleek. Overall, I really like those design, especially these edges and the back panel. Now this is how the phone looks with the case on. It's just a transparent case, there's nothing new. It can give you some grip, prevent smudges, that's all. Not a lot in terms of drop protection. Now these are the complete specifications of this phone. On the rear, it's got quad camera setup with a 50 megapixel primary camera followed by 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, a 2 megapixel camera for taking macro shots and another 2 megapixel camera for taking portrait shots. For selfies, we get a 16 megapixel camera with f2.45 aperture. As for the display, we got a 6.5 inch IPS display with HD plus resolution with 90 hertz screen refresh rate and a peak brightness of 500 nits. As for performance, this phone is powered by a MediaTek Helio G37 processor with PowerVR GE8320 GPU with 4GB of LPDDR4X RAM and 64GB of storage. Finally, when it comes to the battery department, it has a massive 5000 mAh battery, supports fast charging and also comes with a 20W turbo power charger inside the box. So you can easily charge this phone from 0 to 80% under 60 minutes. Now let me turn on the phone. So this is how the phone looks once we turn it on and set it up. This is how the UI looks like. This is the home screen, notification panel and here's the settings page. Now this is about page. This phone is running Android 12 right out of the box with the April 1st security patch, which is pretty impressive. As for storage, out of that 64 gigabytes of space, we get 51 gigabytes of space for our user apps and user data. Now this is the camera user interface. It looks pretty similar to other Motorola phones. We got the default photo mode, wide angle mode, macro mode. On the left side, we got the portrait mode and a dedicated night vision. On the right side, we got the video mode and the more section. We got a pretty similar interface even for the front facing camera. Now these are some sample shots. I'll also be posting a dedicated camera review so you can check that out for more sample shots. Now let's test the speakers. This one has just a single speaker at the bottom and this is how it sounds.
speaker on this phone is pretty loud. It's definitely good enough for media consumption, ringtones and alarms. Now let's test the fingerprint scanner. This phone, like many other phones out there, also comes with a side-mounted fingerprint scanner and the performance is pretty good. Once again, here's a quick preview. By the way, we also get a nice haptic feedback every time we use the fingerprint scanner. That's another nice feature from Moto. And the haptic engine is also pretty good. Now we also have the face unlock feature on this phone and that too works really well. In good lighting conditions, it takes about a second or two to unlock the phone. Even in low lighting conditions, it takes about a second or two to unlock the phone. And in complete darkness, it's a hit or a miss. It depends on the brightness of the lock screen. Now I've used this phone for just a day and I must say the performance of this phone is pretty smooth. For a normal user, performance is definitely more than sufficient. Everything runs pretty smooth and the animations and transitions also look pretty good thanks to that 90Hz display. I'll be posting a dedicated video for the complete review. You can check that out for more information. As of now, just based on initial impressions, this is definitely a pretty impressive phone for just a starting price of 11,000 rupees. So if you're someone who wants pure stock Android with continuous updates with no bloatware whatsoever, then I can definitely recommend you this phone. So guys, what do you think about this phone? Do let me know by commenting below this video. And if you're planning to buy this phone, use the link in the description. It always helps the channel. With that said, this is Nikhil signing off. See you in my next video.